Hey friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today I want to share with you what I think might be the most perfect strategy for backing up and archiving your Logic projects, or any important files for that matter. We all know we should be backing up our most important files to multiple locations, you know, multiple drives on hand to the cloud, but it can be easy to feel overwhelmed by the backing up process, easy to fall behind, you know, trying to keep track of what's the most recent version of a project and copying it from one drive to the next to the cloud. And it just can be a bit much. And what I want to show you today is how you can use just two applications to fully automate this process so that once set up, you're no longer in charge of, you know, keeping track of all this stuff. These two apps just run in the background and they automatically back up all of your important files to the cloud, to all their hard drives. And all you have to worry about is just plugging drives in and out. That's it. And these two applications are number one, Dropbox, and number two, Carbon Copy Cloner. Now, I know some folks have some feelings about Dropbox, but while I was preparing for this video, this video was actually supposed to be released last week, but in my preparations, I did the unthinkable. It was all on me. I accidentally deleted every single file in my Dropbox account, and I've been with Dropbox for a long time. 1.7 terabytes of stuff, just gone. Nowhere to be seen. And the wonderful folks at Dropbox helped me out and were able to retrieve everything that I once had and put it all right back in its place. It was amazing. So if that's not the most telling sign of how perfect this is, I don't know what is. So let's dig into this right now. So these two applications, Dropbox and Carbon Copy Cloner, are going to work in tandem, not necessarily together, but they work really well side by side. Dropbox is going to automatically back up any external drives to the cloud. And then Carbon Copy Cloner is going to copy files from one drive to the next or one folder to the next. It's very versatile. And you might be thinking, well, why Dropbox? I have iCloud. Well, iCloud is great, but I find that Dropbox is more robust and offers, you know, more features that makes this very easy. And Carbon Copy Cloner is a lot like Time Machine, but again, more robust, way easier to really fine tune how you want your system to work. Now, if we take a look here, I have a Glyph one terabyte drive. It's an SSD. Any client projects, any album projects, anything that I'm working on currently is saved and worked off of from this drive. So instead of saving it to my Max hard drive, I save it to the Glyph and then Dropbox and Carbon Copy Cloner copy the contents to other places. If we take a look, I have a work in progress folder. I have this album that I've been working on forever. I have riffs and WLPR stuff. So Previous to this whole system that I set up just very recent, the way I would work on content, if we look at this album here, is that I would work from this hard drive. I would open the project right here and then make my changes and make anything that I want to do, save it to this version. And then I would open my Dropbox folder. So when you download Dropbox to your Mac, it creates a folder in the favorite section and you just drag files into this folder and it's beamed to Dropbox. So if we take a look under music production, collabs, and this is the old way that I was working previous to this system that I'm showing you. And so we can see that this project is right here in the collabs folder. And right now it's not currently on my Mac's hard drive. It's actually just in the cloud, but we see a reference to this project on the Mac. That's how awesome Dropbox is. So I would work on this project here on the solid state drive. And then I would hold option, click and drag to the Dropbox folder. And I would save as such. And it should have gone into the LP2 version here. So let's just stop this right now. But that was the point. I would just drag and copy to Dropbox. It was pretty tedious. And then I could use Carbon Copy Cloner to save to another drive. All right. So up until now, this is the way that I've been working. But check it out. I'm going to plug in this separate hard drive. And I'm going to plug it into my Mac. It's going to take a second. But once... The drive is available. Dropbox is going to have a new dialog that pops up. All right, this pop-up is pretty new to me. I think that Dropbox released this feature this year. I've only become recently aware of it. I guess I haven't been plugging drives in and out of my Mac too often. But Dropbox wants to know like, hey, I see that there's this hard drive that's connected to your Mac. Should Dropbox back up this hard drive? And the dialog says Dropbox will regularly back up this drive in the background while it's plugged in. And it's on an every hourly basis. And the options you have is either not now, don't ask me again, which I'm not going to do. You can back up the entire contents of this drive, say, yeah, absolutely, back up everything. Or you can choose folders. 
So you can be very pinpointed about what you want to back up. Let's do that right now. So I have these two folders and you can select, no, I don't want this folder backed up, but I want this folder, the refs folder. I want that backed up. So I'm just going to cancel. So if we go to the top level in Dropbox, you can see that I now am backing up my Glyph solid state drive to Dropbox, the entire contents. And you can see Dropbox right here and it's zero bytes. That's kind of crazy, right? So every hour now, the entire contents or most of the contents on the solid state drive are being backed up to Dropbox and it's not taking up any space on my Mac. It's automatically beamed to your Dropbox account in the cloud. That's it. From here on out, you don't have to worry about, and I don't have to worry about backing up to the cloud. It just happens automatically on an hourly basis. That is amazing. I love this. And how do we know that this is actually in Dropbox? Well, we can just look at the little check mark here next to the name to let us know, yes, it has been backed up. But again, zero bytes. It's kind of fishy. So let's right click here and let's go down to view on dropbox.com. And you're going to see my Dropbox account. And there it is, almost all of the contents. I chose specific folders that I wanted back up from this Glyph drive, but there it is, the work in progress, the album. Let's click on it. And if we open up the finder and take a look at the Glyph drive. Oh yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. So at this point, you don't have to worry about backing up to the cloud manually and trying to remember, boom, it's all done for you. Okay, so let's now move on to the other application and that is Carbon Copy Cloner. And this is a third-party application, absolutely. And both of these applications, you know, require payment if you want to get the best of them. But let me just walk you through Carbon Copy Cloner. So you can see it's living in the taskbar here. Same with Dropbox. They live, you know, just in the taskbar, just doing their thing. If we open Carbon Copy Cloner, we have this window where we're able to create tasks. And the way the tasks work is you basically say, hey, I want to select a source. So in this case, a source could be an external drive, the internal drive, a folder. Let's choose a folder. So if we choose a folder, let's choose just the Rifts folder. And now we need to choose a destination. So Carbon Copy Cloner is going to copy the Rifts folder to somewhere else. So let's choose another drive. Let's choose the red hard drive. But instead of just choosing the red hard drive, actually, let's cancel out, right? Let's choose another folder. So let's go to that red hard drive. Let's create a new folder and we'll call this Riffs 2. Click OK. And now Carbon Copy Cloner is going to copy the contents of one folder, specifically on a drive, to another folder on a different drive. And then we could set an automation. So we can choose to not run this task on a schedule. You, it could just rely on you just hitting start, just doing it manually, or you can set this on once at a specific time, hourly, daily, weekly, and even monthly. There's so many options. So let's choose daily. And I'm going to choose daily at 6 p.m. And we click done. Now we just hit save. And at this point, Carbon Copy Cloner, anytime these two drives are connected to the Mac, Carbon Copy Cloner at six o'clock every day is going to copy the contents from the Glyph drive, from the Rifts folder to the Rifts 2 folder on the separate red hard drive. It is amazing. So at this point, I bet you can imagine Cool. Now you are no longer responsible for backing up. It just does things automatically. You just got to plug in the drives. And you can see, in fact, that I have this separate automation for my archive drives. I have these lacy drives. They're four terabytes each and they're not plugged in currently. So we see this icon, but while they're plugged in, I just hit start and anything that's changed on the archives are automatically copied back and forth. This is how incredible this is. Now, I do want to walk you through real quick how I accidentally deleted everything in my Dropbox account, just so you don't ever do this yourself. Let's create another automation and let's create a new task. Let's click on the Glyph drive. doesn't really matter what we click on. Let's click on the destination and let's click on someplace where I'm not going to do a lot of damage. We'll just choose this Rifts 2 folder, right? Now, if we click on the destination, and if you go to this option called Safety Net, I wasn't really paying attention. I turned this off. So I chose the Glyph drive. I chose Dropbox as the destination, but I turned off safety net. And, you know, it doesn't seem to be bothered that I turned it off. And then I hit start. And what happened was, is when safety net is off, it deletes all the contents 
on the destination and then starts to save what you wanted to save to that destination. So I deleted everything out of my Dropbox and it's not placed in the trash on your Mac. It's just gone. And this is, this is how horrible the situation was. I couldn't retrieve it myself. Maybe if I dug into the trash on Dropbox, but that was a very overwhelming idea. So I reached out to Dropbox themselves and they were like, absolutely. Here's a list of events. It's dropbox.com slash events. And they said, just pick the event where you want to go back to, you want to rewind to. I told them which event and a day later, everything was back. It was amazing. So this is how beautiful this entire setup is. There is one thing that sort of sucks about Dropbox that I do want to share with you just to be completely candid. Remember the dialogue that asks us, hey, do you want to back up your drive? If you decide, no, I don't want to. And later you decide, yes, I do want to. That dialogue from Dropbox never pops back up. It seems that Dropbox has identified, don't even acknowledge that drive from here on for the rest of eternity. And I couldn't find a hidden file or anything that Dropbox deposits on that hard drive. Maybe somebody in the comment section could find it and let me know, but the dialogue never pops back up. So if this drive that I don't want to back up today, but maybe a month from now I do, you have to delete all of the contents. You have to reformat the drive for Dropbox to once again see it. And that is kind of annoying. Same thing goes if you create a backup. So if we go back to the finder, we go to Dropbox and this Glyph drive, maybe I decide I want to delete this backup. And the only way you delete it, right click, go to Dropbox. And from here you go, Dropbox, you select the Glyph drive or the drive that you're backing up and you go to delete because this is an online only file. If you delete the external backup and then want to re-backup that drive, you have to reformat the drive for Dropbox to see it again. This is pretty annoying. I wish Dropbox had an option just in the app here where you could easily, you know, just select, you know, this drive, backup, this drive don't, and you could change it, you know, periodically if you wanted to. That's the one annoying factor about this. And the last thing is obviously these are paid applications. You are going to have to part with some cash to get any sort of meaningful value from them. I personally, I use the professional Dropbox plan and I'm paying 20 bucks a month, but you get so many features and I'm paying for what, three terabytes of space. If you start with the plus plan is two terabytes of space and you still get 30 days of recovery and rewind. And if we take a look at the help doc for backing up an external hard drive, you can see that this option to back up external hard drives is on the basic plus professional family and other plans. And Carbon Copy Cloner, which is the application we use to copy from drive to drive, folder to folder. If we take a look at the buy now here, we're going to see at the time of this writing that Carbon Copy Cloner 6 is like 40 bucks US. I mean, that's next to nothing. And to be completely transparent and clear, I don't want you to think that this is a sponsored post. I pay for Dropbox. I've been paying for it for years. It's never let me down. I pay for Carbon Copy Cloner. I've paid the license to own it and then to update it when it's been updated. That to me is so well worth the ability to make sure that all of my stuff is safe and sound somewhere that I can retrieve in case the house burns down, my Mac dies, whatever. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope it encourages you to back up and archive your own projects to get that process going or to fully automate it if you've been doing it. If this video has been helpful for you, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.